Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I am really, really excited because it is finally time to film my 15 beauty discoveries of 2015 video. The reason why I choose to do it this way personally is just because I really don't find enough new products kind of every single year to warrant doing like this is my foundation of the year, this is my concealer of the year um, because they would pretty much be the same. These are all things that are new to me personally, they're not new releases from this year in fact I think most of them probably have been out for way longer than a year so they're just new things that I have discovered this year and I can't really imagine my little beauty kit being without now. So the first one that I ended up picking out is the Maybelline Last Sensational Lash Multiply Mascara. This is the waterproof version. I didn't think that I would find anything that would replace my Max Factor Full Slash Effect waterproof. I absolutely adore that mascara. I still do, but this one is just a tiny little bit easier to use and I find that the results are pretty similar. It gives a really nice, full, thick, black lash that really doesn't budge throughout the day. I do tend to use waterproof formulas and that's just what I prefer. I find that it holds a curl a lot easier and if I use coconut oil in the evenings, as I do pretty much every evening anyway, it removes every waterproof formula that I've ever used. But the one gripe that I do have is that the packaging isn't that brilliant and I am now just got covered in like pink, glittery, sparkly stuff. Like, it's a really, really good high street mascara. I don't tend to buy high-end mascaras. I don't really see the point in spending that much when you can get such good ones on the high street. Next up, I have a hair product. This is Brilliantine by Bumble and Bumble. This has become one of my go-to daily hair products. I absolutely love that kind of rough, disheveled look to my hair. This deals with that just perfectly. It adds a really nice beachy kind of rough texture to the hair, but it doesn't look too disheveled. It still gives a little bit of shine. The hair still looks healthy. Unlike some of the kind of texture creams and stuff that I've used in the past that just make the hair look a little bit sticky, they can make it feel incredibly dry. When I first bought it I was really sceptical because it is such a teeny tiny bottle and I thought there is no way that that is going to justify like £20 I think this cost me, but it does, it lasts for absolutely ages and I use it every single day and I've still got quite a lot left about six months on. Next up I have a bronzer, this is the Balm's Bahama Mama bronzer, I really struggled to say that, Bahama Mama, Bahama Mama? This is the first year really that I've got into bronzers, I've always shied away from them quite a lot just because I am so fair, I've always worried that they'd look too glittery or too orange. This is a really nice one, it's a super duper matte formula, it doesn't look too orange at all and it's really easy to blend out as well. I know a lot of people ask me about it and whether it is very good for fair skin and to be honest this is probably the best bronzer that I found, high end, high street, anything in between. One fragrance that I've been completely loving this year is this. This is Tom Ford's Black Orchid. I first got this in the summer, I think, and it's much more of a sort of autumnal, wintry scent. It's very deep, it's very musky, kind of spicy. I tend to go for those deeper, darker, woodier scents, so this one is right up my street. It's got to be my absolute favourite, and out of everything in my entire perfume collection, this is by far the longest lasting. I think the only place where I'm slightly bending the rules this year is that I'm including two lip balms, and I am going to count these as one, just because I feel like lip balms are a really weird thing to put on a list like this. I haven't really got a massive amount to say about both of them, but they are two of my absolute favourites. The first is the Nukes Reeve de Miel lip balm and this is absolutely gorgeous. If you want something that's very deeply nourishing, um, it does have these tiny little beads in it as well. They're really quite undetectable, but once you put it onto the lips, you really can feel that it's exfoliating them. It's a lovely one to leave on overnight as well. The other one that I wanted to mention is the EOS lip balm. I'm not entirely sure what these are called, but it's the kind of spherical ball one and this one is in sweet mint and I am obsessed. It smells exactly like Aero Bubbles, if you've ever had them. They're like the minty Aero chocolates, the little spherical thing. Comes in really handy, and those two together have been working wonders on my lips. I've got really dry, sore, kind of chapped lips all year round, so I think that I have finally found the cure, touch wood. This is Nashe Glow. I think that this is pretty much at the end of its life now. I wear the shade Light 3, which is Gobi, and this is perfect if you have sort of yellow undertones to your skin, as I do. I find it really difficult because I do have very fair skin, 
but it's definitely got this kind of yellowy tone to it. The coverage of this, the application, the longevity, just the overall finish and the look and the appearance of it is absolutely flawless. I love it so, so much. It's definitely not sheer, it's not particularly glowy. Um, it leaves like a nice kind of satiny, almost semi-matte finish to the skin. This one just edges it for me. It's a lovely, lovely foundation. So admittedly, these aren't the prettiest products to put on your shelf. Um, they actually sit in a little box in my bathroom, but I feel as though I have to mention them anyway. This year, I decided to get my eyebrows threaded for the first time, and alongside that, I also started to tint them. And tinting them is probably the biggest difference that I've seen from everything that I've done to them over the past year. I do tint my own and I asked, I think on Twitter, for any recommendations that anyone had and Bridie, um, who has just got the most phenomenal eyebrows, I'll put a link to her Instagram down below. She recommended this little kit which I bought from Amazon and I have to say that I'd never tinted my eyebrows before, it wasn't something that I knew anything about but as a complete novice it is the easiest thing in the world to do. I do it every kind of two weeks and it just makes the biggest difference. So the one that I went for is the Refector Seal and I own this in the shade Natural Brown number three. I was actually at one point thinking about doing a video on how I tint my own eyebrows Although, once I'd kind of decided that I wanted to do that, Pixie Woo um, put a video up that was very, very similar. They don't use the same kit, but I think like everything that she mentioned was pretty much the same way as I do it. So I'll put a link to that down below. I will also put a link to a video that Bridie has done um, on tinting her brows. She uses this kit. If you do want me to do one, then let me know and I'll try and get around to it. But I think that those two pretty much cover everything that I do anyway. Moving on to tools. And this is probably the newest thing in this whole collection. This is a beauty blender. New for me. I mean, not new in general. I finally caved and bought this after I'd kind of got used to using the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I did start to really like that. I hadn't liked it for a long time. I'd say I've had one of those. I probably bought my first one like way over a year ago and it took me a really long time to kind of get into using it to really understand how it works I think. I then bought the Beauty Blender and I have to say that this in my personal opinion is a thousand times better, it's just got a much better texture and I know it's a lot more expensive but for me personally it is worth it. Sticking with tools and the other one that I wanted to mention is the MAC 266 Angled Brush. This is perfect if you use something like the Anastasia Dip Rub Made, which tends to be what I use with it. It's also perfect if you want something to apply gel liner with and if you work the best with like an angled brush. It's incredibly thin, it's very compact. This is absolutely perfect for both of those things. It's incredibly easy to use and it's really precise as well. Next up from Hourglass, I have got the Hourglass Nude Femme, Femme Nude in the number six. And this is just my perfect, perfect nude. The formula is so gorgeous on these and to be honest, I really haven't heard or seen a lot from them at all. You get an incredible amount of product. I'm really, really nervous about twisting this up in case it breaks. Yeah, that's not even, that's not even fully twisted up and I'm going to leave it at that. You get an incredible amount of product and it is hourglass so it is beautifully, beautifully packaged and they are just the most comfortable, kind of satiny, semi-matte formula to wear on the lips. There are six different nudes in the set and I would say that if you are a nude fan, as I am obviously, you really can't go wrong with them. It's perfect to keep in your handbag as well. It obviously comes in this little pen form, a little bit like the Clinique Chubby Sticks, but it is a lot more pigmented. Sticking with makeup, and I just had to mention this, this is the Amazing Cosmetics Amazing Concealer. I use this in the shade Fair Golden and this is just the perfect shade for underneath the eyes. Although I think that the vast majority of the shades in this collection do have that kind of pinky peachy undertone to it, which is just perfect. If you're looking for something to cover like any blue, any purple shadows underneath the eyes, then this is the one. It lasts all day long. It's really, really difficult to kind of smudge or rub off. It's really, really highly pigmented, but it does cover absolutely everything. And it's not as cakey on the skin as something like the Kevin O'Quan Central Skin Enhancer. I don't find. I bought these at around the same time 
um, and the Kevin O'Quan one I have to say has gone back into my bottom drawer, the bits of makeup that I don't really use all too often and this one has stayed with me, it's one that I take absolutely everywhere. Another brow product that I've actually heard lots and lots and lots about so I'm sure that all of you will as well, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it but this is the Soap and Glory Archery Pencil, not that you would know it, I've only had it for a couple of months. Um, and all the writing has completely rubbed off. I have it in the darker shade, which I think is called Hot Chocolate, and I've got the one with the little mechanical pencil. I think that both of them have that, and then I've got the one with the spoolie on the other end. Another one that I've heard so much about, is definitely not a new product by any means, but it's new to me this year anyway, is the Bobbi Brown Corrector. You can see how much I love this. I've hit pan on it pretty severely. It probably won't be too long now until I need to get a new one, but it is amazing. If, like me, you have super dark under eye circles, if you get shadows underneath your eyes, then applying this before any concealer really just makes the job 10 times easier. So all I do is take a tiny little bit of this on my ring finger and just pat it in to the, sort of the inner corners of my eyes where they're at their darkest and it just wakes me up instantly. It's amazing. Second to last is the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate, which I was really, really kindly sent about midway through the year. This stuff is amazing. If you've got skin that's kind of easily congested, if you've got skin that's a little bit blemish prone, that just looks a bit stressed and looks like it needs a little bit of a pick me up, this is absolutely perfect. I apply it in the evenings and I pay particular attention if I've got any kind of scarring, any redness or anything like that and I find that it does an amazing job of helping to diminish that overnight. I've had this for a fair few months as well and I use it pretty much every single night and I've got down to about there and um, so it's going to last you a really really long time for the price. The last product on my list is the MAC lipstick in patisserie. I had to include a MAC lipstick. I'm not actually the biggest MAC lipstick fan but this year in particular I've gone a little bit crazy for them and this is just the perfect nude. I know that I've shown two nude lip colours but they're really all that I wear or I don't tend to go for brights or reds or anything. This is just the most gorgeous formula, it's the one that I pick up every day if I'm looking just for something to throw on like before uni, if I've got a busy day ahead. I feel like I had to mention that because that is probably my most worn lip product for the entire year, hands down. So I'm pretty sure that that makes it to 15 products. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon. Bye!